So as I've been trying to design a good 3D printed eye mechanism, I've also been looking into how I can design an effective, realistic and reproducible eye. So the eyes that I've used in the past have been sort of simple placeholders really where I would just kind of draw on the pupil. But I wanted to start thinking about how I could make something really realistic that would have the sort of lens effect that the cornea gives on a real eye and would look realistic from a variety of different angles rather than just from the front. So what I came up with was a design wherein the eye can easily clip into a holder for painting and then it can clip into another component for the casting chamber and then it can even fit into the eye mechanism using the same standardised fitting and this fitting can be used with any of the eye mechanisms that I've recently come out with. I also wanted to make a design that was easy to print and accessible to just about anyone with a 3D printer regardless of how high quality the printer is, um, yet as realistic as possible within those requirements. So you don't need a particularly good 3D printer as I mentioned, um, I'm using a G-Tech i3 um, but it would help to be able to reliably print small bridges um, because ideally you don't want to use any support material um, and a layer height of about 0.2mm will be ideal um, but if you can fulfil those requirements it doesn't matter too much I think you'll still be able to come out with a good eye. I would also recommend that you're able to print in ABS but PLA is also fine. Um, so you're going to need uh, about 500 millilitres of casting silicone um, you need a very small amount of clear casting resin um, my kit was around 300 mil I believe and that was enough for six eyes and I've only been through about half of it um, you need some very small screws um, like M2 kind of size but I'm sure uh, any size that's roughly that size should be fine uh, you need some acrylic paints some red cotton thread, uh, some super glue and an airbrush would be really useful but that's optional uh, depending on how far you want to go with your uh, design. So using the files that I've provided, the eye and the eye blank files are the ones that you want to print at a nice low layer height and you want to try and get as smooth of a dome as possible. Um, so it's really down to your printer how far you can go with it. but. Um, 0.2mm or less ideally. Um, I also recommend that you don't use supports um, because generally if you do it will be more of a pain to try and get those supports out than it will um, to actually just print it as a, a bridge. So as I mentioned before PLA is okay even though it's kind of a pain to sand but I really do feel like ABS gives a much more realistic eye because um, it seems to be sort of tr slightly translucent. I think the word for it is subsurface scattering where it seems to sort of light up from the inside and I really feel like that adds a lot to the eye and I don't know if it's just the ABS that I chose but it's got a really natural sort of very slightly off-white colour which works really well for the eye in my opinion. Um, so for the other parts, um, the, the holders for casting and painting um, it doesn't matter as much about the layer height, you can go up to probably about 0.3mm and PLA is fine. Um, generally um, ABS is a little bit better for snap fits because it's more flexible and more sort of slidey but uh, don't worry too much about that. So none of the components should need support so there shouldn't be too much post processing for your printing. Um, if your prints are prone to warping on the bottom layers uh, where they tend to expand on the in on the very bottom layer uh, you might need to sand around the bottoms of the snap fit section so that they fit into each other a little bit better um, on both the insides of the eyes and the outsides of the snap fit components so the eyes themselves I think will definitely need sanding to get a smooth appearance um, for the eyes you, you really need to go up to about 240 grit and then you'll have a nice matte surface to paint onto. For the eye blank however I would recommend you get that as smooth as possible. So I went up to a high um, grit sandpaper and then I used high build primer to try and get a very even polish uh, to get an even finish and polished it to a reasonable shine. Uh, with some teacup polishing compound. One thing to note would be that I didn't sand the iris section, that sort of concave part, um, because I thought that the sort of concentric rings would give a sort of 
realistic texture, but looking back on it, I think it would be better if I just sanded the entire thing. Obviously, don't worry about the pupil because that needs to be a solid circle, but um, I would recommend sanding the iris section. The next thing to do is to assemble the casting holder. Um, these two holders should go together really easy with some 10mm or 20mm M2 screws. When you put the eye on or the eye blank you'll notice that there's a small gap um, where the eye meets the holder so just make sure to fill that with a little bit of blue tech. That gap's just there for um, you to seal it or obviously you can use plasticine or anything really. You'll also need to make some channels with um, some blue tech or, or plasticine. Um, just as a way for the uh, resin to be able to escape later on. I actually uh, overlooked needing these channels, so with mine I had to cut it out with a, a Stanley knife. Um, if you have to do that, that's fine, but it will look a lot nicer and probably be a bit more effective if you're able to make some nice channels with blue tack. You also need a way to suspend the blank, so just screw or stick some lolly sticks or anything just to the top just to stop it from falling into the container. So once you're ready and you've got a nice container for the silicone that you've made sure is the right size and not too big like mine was, um, you need to mix it really thoroughly but not too vigorously that you'll start getting a lot of bubbles. Um, so I, ideally you're meant to use a vacuum chamber for silicone um, and I think I would have had a lot better results if I did but I didn't actually have one so I just sort of banged it for a long time. Um, and I did seem to get most of the bubbles out. Another issue was that my container was too big so I had to use some sticks to try and raise the level. So depending on your silicone it should be about 12 hours to dry and then you can pull it out and see how your mould turned out. Um, I had quite a lot of bubbles in mine which was a real shame but it ended up not mattering too much because I kind of expected that I would want to uh, sand the eyes after I'd cast them anyway so if I had used a vacuum chamber I would have been able to get the bubbles out but it turned out to not really matter too much. So now onto the painting. Um, if you've got an airbrush, I recommend that you start by painting the dark ring that most people have around their iris, um, just because you want to have a nice feathered edge on the outside of that, um, and it'll make it look a lot more realistic. And you can also use the airbrush to paint the sort of peachy red at the back of the eye. So because of the shape of the eye holder, um, you can actually put it in a drill and then you can get a perfectly circular um, pattern with the paint. So I'd recommend doing that. So once you've done all the airbrush parts, if that's what you're gonna, that's what you're doing, um, I recommend using the finest brush you can find and just building up the irises gradually. Obviously, look at some different reference pictures to get a good idea of how they look. So initially, I was focusing really heavily on the sort of patterns of. Um, all the different streaks that go into the iris. Um, I did find that I got a better results when I shifted my focus to look more at the colour gradient and the sort of um, the way that uh, the colours transition from the centre outwards. So really for this step um, you've just got to use your own sort of artistic vision to try and get the best eyes that you can. So veins in the eyes had a lot of realism. Um, it is possible to paint them um, but I find that you'll get much better results if you get some cotton thread and um, if you really carefully strip it um, with a knife or some tweezers and get some really really fine strands and then super glue those onto the eye I think it looks really good and um, it looks really realistic. The structure of the cotton thread it, it's really sort of random and unpredictable and cotton thread um, is really good for giving that effect. Uh, don't worry too much if there's little bits of glue sort of sticking out because when you cast the dome over it um, it'll disguise them so don't worry too much. So then onto the casting. So the main issue with this stage and really with the entire process is avoiding bubbles. Um, so the first few I did have a lot more bubbles but then by the end the last ones that I did with the green eyes there's a lot less bubbles. So what I recommend is to mix very carefully and not to be vigorous at all. Be thorough but not vigorous. Um, make sure there's no moisture in anything you're using. Also it was helpful to fill in the irises and pupils before um, casting the dome. You only need about 10 millilitres of resin. It's only a really tiny amount. Um, I mixed it up. I used a hot air gun to try and uh, pop a lot of the bubbles and that really works well. Um, I dunked the eye in the resin mixture before 
putting it into the casting just to sort of wet it. So then you pour it in, give everything a quick go over with a heat gun because uh, it seems to pop bubbles and I also think it makes it a little bit more viscous, uh, sorry less viscous which allows the bubbles to get out easier um, and then plop it in and wipe up any excess. You then want to give it a really good bang to make sure any of those bubbles are able to escape through the vents. I would say to leave it at least 24 hours but you might need a little bit longer depending on your sort of environmental conditions and then it should come out fairly easily. So to finish them off, um, start off with a low grit sandpaper if you need to. Start off with about 120 and work my way up from there. And then after about 600 grit I moved on to tea cut, which is a polishing compound. You just need to rub it in for a bit, let it dry off till it goes sort of, um, sort of cloudy and then rub it off again. Um, and you can do this multiple times to end up with a good shine. Um, you can actually do it on the drill and then to finish off just sort of rub it dry and that should give you a really nice effect. So I hope you got something out of this tutorial. Um, everything you need should be in the description and there's some text instructions even on Instructables um, if you're that way inclined. So the next video is going to be my simplest dye mechanism um, which uses really easy to source parts and simple components. Um, so I hope you stick around for that. See you in the next video.